we are back in the studio. I've got collage pieces of paper ready to go. I've got my sketchbook ready to go. So now it's a case of starting to tear these up and see what happens with these shapes and start to add additional paint to and it. Start to create compositions. And as you can see, I've got this sort of large structural piece of rock, and rock in the foreground here with some collage too. And again, some water. Same with this one, rock formation and some water. So these all give me ideas for composition and then the idea of sort of a sea cave and looking through an aperture. So I'm hoping to come up with a composition here that I can use for a painting that I need to start this week. And hopefully this should show you how quickly and easily this can come together for you too. I think I know the type of composition that I want to go for. I want to lead through rocks and out to sea for this one. Um, here's another one that I did in October while I was in beer. Obviously I've got a sketchbook to rely on because that's my job, but there's nothing to stop you looking at photographs from magazines or these are photographs that, that I've taken as well while I've been obsessing. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Ah, do you know, I quite often take videos because I don't like the idea of having a static image that I'm working from because I want to work more organically. So that was actually perfect in combination with my sketchbook, so that means that I can, I can use that one too. So that's really exciting. So, I've got a bit of a plan. First of all, I'm going to stick in my horizon line. My advice is don't put it in the centre because actually um, a central line isn't that aesthetically pleasing. Um, if you know about the rule of thirds, you'll understand why. So we've got to decide whether it's going to be lower down our horizon line or whether it's going to be higher up. Because we've got quite a few rocks to get into our composition, then it's probably going to be a good idea for the horizon line to be higher up because the rocks are going to be the main feature of this composition. It's not going to be the sky. So then we need to think about the gap. We need to think about actually how much of that sea is going to be showing. And so there's going to be sort of a fair amount there. And then we want sort of some sort of lead in here. But that's, that's, so that's it for drawing. I'm just giving myself an idea of where things are going to go. Now we get to the exciting bit, which is starting to rip that up. Now, um, if you remember the image that I showed you before that looked like it had, um, it almost looked like a bridge, didn't it? It looked like we were seeing through it. That came, yeah, I've got a rock already. <laughs> oh, I love it. That came out of uh, just ripping a piece of paper and then seeing what the piece of paper looked like afterwards. So let's have a look at that shape there. I can see from my image here, I've got different coloured rocks here than I have here. So we've got to sort of decide which rocks are going to go where. It makes sense for the orange rocks to go against the blue of the sea, because obviously I can make the sea whatever colour I would like to. I really do like these subtle colours here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them apart from the orange. So you can see this is now much more subtle. Again, I've just sort of like found that when it was in the whole sheet I couldn't see it but all of a sudden I can it's like having different art glasses on <laughs> like I need to bring in a different color into the mix see that's quite nice Color palette, and then I've got that little that little gap that I had coming through there, but that's now a weird shape. So what's lovely about collage, you can look at your shapes 
and decide how you want them to work together. There's this nice little shape there too. Oh look. Look at that. It's so much more exciting to make a painting from a video. Something quite interesting. See how I knocked that? That was meant to be there. Hmm. And that weird shape. That's not quite so weird anymore. So this is really capitalising on those happy accidents because I'm responding to what's happening. This Lovely, like inverted, reverse, Y shape there. I really like these shapes. So what I can start to do is stick these down and like look at all this paper. I've got like tons of the stuff left over that I can use again. I'm starting to see that bright orange, which I can put into other areas. So let's start to glue this. So I'm just starting to make um, a last few sort of set of decisions about where those last bits of paper are going. Line. I've got a bit of land mass. I've got a nice Y shape here. I've got some rocks that I can have some water. Trickling over. Obviously, I should be putting this on a palette. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not. Speed up my brush, and then I'm going to just start to see how that watercolour pencil's been picked up there. Going over my landmass a bit. So, this is already telling me I could keep the sea. A really really light colour. That's quite nice already. Throw that shut back in and that immediately gives me some marks in the sky. And quite a few bits of cloud just Using. like barely there. Remember, the sky comes from behind yeah. that. Clouds in the sky. Get a few along the horizon line. And I'm just going to reconfirm that land mass with a bit of red line. I like that. So you can see the colour here is marine blue which means that this is more of an aqua. So let's start to put that across there. I'm just going to rinse it off a little bit and then I'm going to use the big brush, not a small one, to start pushing that paint around and see what, see what happens. Notice how it's sort of sweeping around, how that aqua it just loves that orange. So that's the beauty of having your colour palette. I'm going much, much lighter here. And now I've got waves coming in here. Remember I said about those black blobs that I wouldn't need to worry too much about? So I sort of quite like that already. I like the fact it looks like I've got this sort of, because the sea's coming in from this angle, I've got this wave formation coming across here and I've got some of those those areas of wax resist starting to happen. Prussian blue, so I like that contrasting wave here. Let's pop a bit of that Prussian blue at the bottom here. And then let's have some you're going to get some really dark tones here because you've got the shadow of this rock falling onto the water. So I'm now going to go in with my smaller brush I showed you earlier and I'm just going to start dragging some of those shadows down. And 
and I'm going to take some of this Prussian blue actually out of here and I'm going to push it across the inner lines into here as well and then I'm going to take some more of this Prussian blue I'm just going to splatter it around a bit so that should have a bit of a shadow pooling beside it and underneath it as well. I just want to neaten up that land mass there and then this gives me the opportunity to do a bit more hair drying and you'll see that the hair dryer will move it around a bit as well. So the last thing to do is to start to put some of those darker contrasts in tone in. So things like this sort of edge of a facet of a rock here, which is to do with knowing that in order for that to look like an edge, we've got that top surface there and then we've got those side facets there. Things like having these sort of strong reflections and contrast and tone in which you can also see within the video here as well. So starting to put those stronger contrasts in. If you didn't want to put it in with ink like I have, so I've put it in with a mixture of the black ink and then the Prussian blue ink in there, then what you can do is you can use pieces of collage to put that in and then you don't have to take so much of a risk. So I'm just in the final stages now. I'm starting to sort of see some of the colours that have come in here. I'm wondering what they'll look like in other places. So putting it on my palette knife because that's quite a nice squared off shape. I'm thinking, okay, I wonder what would happen if I'm echoing that colour that I have here. Here, and what would what would happen if I started to put it down in in this area here and we're sort of getting to those last conclusive marks in a composition where you can easily like really easily overdo it and then you keep going and going and going and it gets muddier and muddier and I would say that this composition isn't quite finished but what it is is it's close and it's getting to the stage that if I put too many more marks on I'm going to lose a sense of what's working and what's not and so I know from experience she says putting a few more marks on that I probably need to stop and then possibly go back to this at another time or leave it as it is because this is going to be something that will turn into a bigger image something that I can explore further in a larger painting now I have the composition and what I've got which is what I set out to do is a variety of mark making and experimentation which has not just happened on these collage pieces that we created itself but some of this like the wax resist has started to actually translate into the way that I'm using paint and that's a really good bridge for that gap between the theory of experimentation and the excitement of experimentation and how you can move forward and transition into your work becoming looser and freer through using collage and experimenting with materials and mixed media. So I hope that's something you enjoyed and you found useful. Take care. I hope you found this enjoyable and it's given you some ideas, some food for thought and some opportunities for you to go and be creative with materials and collage too.